Welcome, welcome everybody. I'm going to make this video to talk about what is in the news right now, and that is the Proud Boys. I want to first start by saying I hate identity politics. Uh, you know, your race, creed, religion, you know, that, that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is how you conduct yourself uh, as a person morally. I want to start by saying Gavin McGinnis himself tweeted out uh, regarding the stabbing that happened in, in Oakland. Uh, recently. One, Proud Boys are a multiracial club. Two, Nia Wilson was not stabbed by a Proud Boy. And I want to pause there and say that this man was from Concord, was a wingnut. I don't know him, but I had seen him a couple times, and I know that the Proud Boys would not have someone like this in their, uh, you know, it's not someone they would hang out with. Um, three, Gavin says, we never planned to meet at Make Wrestling. Um, you are attacking random strangers based on lies. Fake news. Say her name. Until I met a Proud Boy face to face last year in Berkeley, I was under the impression that they were associated with Identity Europa and uh, in, in the Western Sovereignist uh, part, but also in the racial uh, part that they believed whites were superior. I, I was misled. I didn't know that the Proud Boys are not racist. They have no identity politics they they don't care what color you are uh, what they are is a drinking club for guys that go out one saturday a month and hang out at the bar um i'm going to i'm going to just let you listen to this interview that uh conservative youtube channel man the unknown filmed of me when i uh was awakened to the fact that proud boys are not racist to their bullshit, but I don't see any Proud Boys here today, so I, I don't know why they're calling people Nazis and, uh, and racists. Before you, before you go call them Proud Boys Nazis, I, I didn't racist, say that, I didn't racist, say that. I'm sorry. I suggest you get to know them. I have. Look at my face. They're amazing people. Do you identify as a Proud Boy? What, what, what do Proud Boys stand for? I, I don't know. I just know what I've been told on the streets here. I'm a non-medic on YouTube. Anything you want to say? Well, I I've been told that uh, things from Proud Boys are claiming that genes make make people superior to another. I'm hearing some of that, like targeting. Like I I, I haven't verified it. I, uh, I haven't really been interested too. But all we're for is Western chauvinism. So we believe Western culture is best, and that should be up there. People can have their own culture. But you can't take someone else's culture away. Yeah, the West is based on Judeo Christian values. And so that's what our country is based on. It doesn't mean our country is owned by a theocracy of any sort. But that's who we are. We, we promote Western values. As, as a Christian, I want to point out that I've read Sir Francis Bacon's book, The yeah. New Atlantis, and it details how this was actually a social experiment yeah. to, to allow the, the bringing of a new world order, or the old age of Atlantis, the antediluvian age. Okay. America was actually a social experiment to bring that about. Um, and you can clearly see by studying Freemasonry and uh, occult symbolism in the, in the cities, from San Francisco all the way to, to Washington. Sure. Uh, Satanism has, has laced the foundations of this country. I'm not saying it's not. Um, all I'm I, saying is that... I, I object to that it was established with Judeo-Christian values because uh, it inherently wasn't. And, but I don't believe that it should be torn down in, in a hateful way the way uh, Antifa is intending. So anything can infiltrate anything. Uh, I, I believe in education, or open dialect, uh, yeah. getting one ideology to understand. Well, why well, do you're they believe assuming that Judeo-Christian values do not allow that? In fact, this is the, the values that allow freedom of speech, where you can uh, yeah. be a Muslim extremist. And with, if you don't commit violence, you're able I'm to I'm a constitutionalist. Okay, that's cool. I'm a constitutionalist. I, I'm, that's I'm what brings that. me here to f support free speech. Yeah, I'm with you, brother. Uh, but in the sense that uh, this country was founded on, on purely Christian... Uh, it's not founded beliefs. on purely Christian... I know that's not true. Yeah. And that's, that's part of the Rockefeller school system line. I believe that's to force the hard right into their ideology. Yeah, I'll give you just that. The way We're the, not hard right. Uh, 
But what I what I what I want to see is the left and the right. They agree on more things than they disagree. For instance, the Federal Reserve's monopoly of yeah. money. Yeah, that's uh, the biggest problem is the Fed. Now, where anarchists don't want any government, you know, the right wants small government. Well, man, that's, that's a starting that's, that's a starting, starting place. place. Yeah, thank you. It's definitely not a reason for us to be in the fight in the street fighting each other. We're not here to I, mind that. I came out of the left, but April fifteenth, I got pushed toward the right. I guess I consider myself yeah. a libertarian. Okay, you there you go. Hey, that's cool with me. I'm all for that. I'm all for diversity of thought. Okay, guys, after that little chat with uh, a proud boy, thank yeah, you. That's the first time I've, I've got to, to talk you. face to face with someone who died. Appreciate your openness. Yeah. So, I, you're, you're okay with the Western way of life? Uh, it's got nothing to do with race, is that what I No, understand? nothing to do with race. In fact, we were invited to unite the right, and we felt that it was leaning towards white nationalism slash supremacy. No, we were going to show up. No, no, uh, well, that's that's awesome. I, I will definitely. I, I don't censor. I don't filter. You know, as, as anonymous, I believe in against censorship. Hey, hey, good. Even even if you guys were racist, I don't believe you would feel as standing yourself. The minute you start telling this guy to hate that guy because of his skin's color, right? Well, I don't care if the other guy throws a brick at your face. You know, yeah, if no, you're that's, if you're spitting sure. hateful bullshit, you're gonna have consequences. I agree. I'm with you on that, brother. And so yeah, I I just what I get from the idea from reading the, uh, even Identity Europa, some of their stuff, Yeah, I get it's more, you know, like, I'm proud of my heritage, in essence, compared to, like, you know, it's not anti his heritage. Correct. Correct. And, but I, I guess I stand with George Carlson as I say, well, what do you have to be proud of that, that it's just luck, it's, it's happen chance that you are the skin color, race, or whatever, you know, I could be, I could be an African licking a puddle right now. Hey, yeah. be proud. But it, it's by chance I was born in this blessed country where we all had the freedom to, to come come assemble. And, you know, the, the notion of skin color, when you look at it, biologically, white people are only an adaptation to their environment, just like black people. That's 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 exactly what I say. I believe yeah. in adaptation to the fullest, you know, as, as Darwin saw with the canaries introduced to an island and yep. made different species. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah, uh, in absolutely. fact, it was, it was reading Darwinism that, that is why I, I don't support uh, evolution as nothing but a theory yet. Yeah, you know, if you can have one one virus be exposed to an enzyme or protein or anything and become a bacteria, become a different kind, yeah, and you can duplicate it and, and record it, then I'll accept evolution of the hasn't kind. hasn't been duplicated, hasn't been replicated. And, and it was Darwin's own word that said evolution is a far-fetched theory. Yeah. So it was by reading Darwin's writings I, I, I became opposed to evolution, uh, but not anti-evolution. You know, if you prove it to me, it's, it's science. Now, right. now they did do uh, research with, I believe it was fruit flies, because they multiply and re repopulate so quickly. And I believe that what they discovered is they keep these fruit flies in the dark, and their eyes evolve to a white color. Adapt. Adapt, adapt to a white yeah. color, which is a form of evolution. I mean, we ad adapt certain but, characteristics. But, wait, Ronald Reagan, our street artist. What's up, brother? <laughs> and I'm going to stop that video right there. You know, a friend of mine walked up. I'm going to let you hear this word from, from a proud boy himself. Hello, guys. It's me, Yosef, on my channel, Ozium Media. And um, if you click on this video, you're pretty sure there's two things you, you want to know. Is, is the proud boy this hateful group and are we are we, are we racist that's tend to be the, the big tool of uh, what everybody is wondering about the proud boys so an incident happened um, recently and while we're in the news again which we, we tend to try our best to stay out of the news cycle um, about a week ago in LA we had a bunch of proud boys that went to a bar and was harassed at the end of the day. And a lot of reporters, um, specifically in California, was trying to blame the Proud Boys for going out there and say, maybe it was you guys' fault that this happened. Which we responded is, maybe that's victim blame. That's, doesn't that sound like victim blaming? Because um, at the end of the day, it was a bunch of Proud Boys that went out and got a bunch of drinks and some rich white kid which is, it's important for me to point this out right now 
some rich white kid say, hey, wouldn't it be really funny to go down to this bar and fuck with these proud boys that's doing nothing besides drinking? And that's what they did. So they went down there and harassed these proud boys. And the problem was, uh, they tried to tell the bar owner that, no, these are white supremacists. And the bar owner and a lot of the staff was confused because, like, wait, these guys, these guys are not all white. Oh my goodness! Why are these white supremacists so damn diverse? I'm so confused. Look at all these fucking black and brown and Jewish people over here. And like the five white guys. It makes no sense. You like, you had a bunch of white people that came up to a bar and harassed a bunch of people of color. Although on the left that you guys are not supposed to do things like this. But I digress. So with that incident happening... Because like I said, it was some rich white kid that came to down to this bar to harass the Proud Boys and then call them much racial epithets. No, the Proud Boys was in everybody's mind. Like this, this hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center standards. Um, it's in our city and we reject hate. So of course, because it's fresh in the mind that the Proud Boys are the new so-called alt-right, which we're not. And these so-called white nationalists, which if you look at this video right now that you're listening to and you're watching, I am obviously not black, I mean, not white. No, not, I am black, but according to the comments that I've been receiving the past couple of days, I have must seem like it digress. Because um, recently a person was murdered. Um, it was a horrible murder. Uh, I believe her name is Nia Williams. Was was stabbed. Uh, it was some crazed up white white dude that was a criminal already. Uh, seemed like he had a violent history. Uh, and what happened uh, early early that early that day? A video was posted where some guys say, "Well, I think it's the Proud Boys. I heard about them, and I think it's the Proud Boys." And with him saying that, I think it is the Proud Boys. What happened afterwards? is a series of unfortunate events where it went from I think it's the Proud Boys and when I heard it was the Proud Boys it, to somebody say it definitely yes it was the Proud Boys the Proud Boys have done this and it went from that to oh the Proud Boys we have to reject hate from our, our city and it just got bigger and bigger the past two days on, on all my videos talking about the Proud Boys it was just Coon, 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 coon. Uh, they're gonna, they gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get drunk and they're gonna, you know, you know, drag you by your ankles, by your truck. Uh, they, they're tricking you. All these good things. Oh, you must be, you know, you, you must be uh, in, in somebody's basement. This is not true. A, I'm bigger than the average person. Like, if any of my city videos of me on the street, I'm, I'm pretty fucking big. Uh, B, no I can get me. This is a free country. And C, is not what you think it is. It's mostly a drinking club. Uh, once a month, we go to a bar and we drink. And that's it. It's not political. It's we going out and hang out. I mean, hanging out. What is wrong with that? But it doesn't matter. The Southern Poverty Law Center have called us a hate group. And because of that, it have been plenty of, of the best way I can say it, um, dumbasses who assume that the Proud Boys have meetups on Mondays and Tuesday, which never happens. We have meetups on Saturdays because if you didn't know, Saturdays are for the boys. So, because of this, uh, of this outrage, it was just a case where a person, a random person, was mobbed and attacked because somebody thought that he was a Proud Boy. <laughs>
This was this was a random guy. This wasn't one of our guys. It just so it happened that he was walking on the streets and just got attacked. How do I know? Well, I went to Twitter. He wasn't a Nazi though. He's a false parent to two African American girls and a close friend of my sister. Which a person responded back. If that's the case, do you know how the misunderstanding happened? And he responded back, no, my sister didn't give me full detail. But what I'm getting is they did that just because he was white. This was something that's, that happened that was horrible. It should never happen. You know why it happened? Because people kept throwing the Proud Boys names into stuff. And they kept calling us white supremacists. Even though the first initial thing that happened, incident that happened in California, it was a bunch of multi-racial multi no Proud Boys. It wasn't just white guys it wasn't it was it was mostly other races and he just goes in to talk about how sean king uh originally the original poster who named the proud boys you could you could do research on it for yourself um i don't know if this post is still up but you know he goes into this really uh emotional thing and i just want to point out all of this is played off emotions the far left the far right they play off of people's emotions to get them to, to react emotionally without rational thinking and critical thinking. And, you know, before you react to something, please take a deep breath. Go do some research on it. Find the facts before you even form an opinion on the matter. Now, I'm going to leave you with this last video that is from wearechange.org, Luke Wadowski and Tim Poole, who both came out of Occupy Wall Street as myself, and who both didn't seem to buy into the MK Ultra. All three of us are very close to center, it seems. Check out this video right here. They discuss their political uh, alignment. Mine currently is just left of center. It varies, like, you know, under under the last president, like, a couple of views, you know, people change, their viewpoints change. Being left to center doesn't mean I support communism. And, you know, no matter where I would be on the spectrum, I would never support fascism or communism in their fullest, because they're essentially the same thing. And it's a uh, complete loss of freedoms. You know, the most freedoms is pretty much right in the middle, where the government has the least power. So I'm going to leave you with this video for them. I don't want to nerf views from them. Please go subscribe to wearechange.org. Here you go. This is Rukodowski of wearechange.org here in Portland, Oregon. And today I am joined by half groblin, goblin, and half Asian man, mixed race, Tim Poole of, of course, TimCast. And, of course, we're going to be talking about the very controversial New York Times editorial hire as well as race and politics. Now, uh, me and you have been traveling all over the place covering issues about poverty, inequality, war, and everyone in the United States seems to be dominated with outrage mobs, identity politics, and a lot of the other issues that are affecting a lot of the world in very severe ways are kind of being shrugged under the rug. What is happening here and why is this kind of like race politics dominating our discourse? I mean, I don't know for sure, but I, but I think it's worth pointing out that during Occupy Wall Street, the conversation was the powerful elites, the big banks, the corruption of our economic system, the financial crisis. And at the beginning of Occupy, I don't know if you remember, but there were old conservatives down there, libertarian Ron Paul supporters with the far left, because they both said, you know, we agree, these big banks, this big el this elitism is, is a problem. And then all of a sudden, a group of people came in and started making everything about race. They started separating the people based on their, you know, race, gender identity. They had the People of Color Caucus, the Women's Caucus, one, then another Women's Caucus for trans women because one didn't want them. And then all of a sudden the conversation shifted from we need to, you know, be concerned about what the powerful elites are doing with war and drone strikes. And it became you're, you're white or you're black and therefore you're the problem. And now all of a sudden you actually have people more interested in fighting them, fighting each other in the streets over who is the wrong group, who is the wrong color, who is the wrong identity and ignoring the powerful elites who are 
look, I mean, we've, we've had what, a missile strike in Syria. We've had uh, commando raids in Yemen. And that's not even in the conversation anymore. Yeah. I mean, there could be many conspiracy theories, but it is worth kind of elaborating because I was there during Occupy Wall Street. There's many people uh, from all different political spectrums, a lot of people who are you know, against the Federal Reserve, against the kind of inequality that's happening here, their corporate uh, and government stealing of wealth from the people. And, those, and then, you know, tranquilly, it changed to those same people who were at the very same park fighting each other. Even here in Portland yesterday, I saw people from both sides that I saw at Occupy Wall Street, and they're on opposing sides. So uh, there is something to say about the effectiveness, about this divide and conquer that has been happening and the bigger fighting that uh, is erupted between people. Instead of focusing on large institutions and larger problems, they're like, now we're going to hate each other because of our, our, our basic differences. And that is definitely highlighted with what's happening right now with the New York Times editorial hire, Sari Young, and uh, the whole race issue that's being discussed there. How do you see this whole thing unfolding for the people who haven't been following it? Because again, I don't talk about race and politics. You do on your channel. What the hell happened and how, how is this unfolding in the bigger national discourse? I mean, I don't know how it happened. It happened. And now you've got this woman from the New York Times. She's racist. I mean, that's not just my opinion. It, it is my opinion, but the New York Daily News called her racist. BB, the BBC initially called her racist and then stealth edited the article later. You know, the New York Times went and edited an old article about Roseanne where they're critical of racism because now that they're supporting... Here, I'll, I'll put it this way. The New York Times defended Sarah Jung. She made thousands of racist tweets. And on an old article written in the New York Times, they said something to the effect of, if we, when, when you let racism slide, we all lose. The New York Times removed that from the article. And the only reason I can imagine, I don't know why they did it, but my personal opinion is that they removed it because they did support racism. So now that, you know, most people agree what Sarah Jong said, all, like she called white people groveling goblins. Like, come on, that's racist. Uh, the, the whole idea of this institutional power structure stuff is, is absurd and it's not the real definition of racism. If you think a race is inferior, if you antagonize or discriminate, you're a racist. And now, now we have this weird paradox happening because, for one, the New York Times basically, by, by removing that line from the Roseanne article, I feel like they've admitted it. But now you have this, there's a comedian who was on Waters World on Fox News who, who, said, who called her Ling Ling and made references to her eating fortune cookies. And pe on the left is now saying that's racist. But hold on, the comedian's black. So a week ago, the left was saying you can't be racist towards people above you in the power structure because racism is prejudice plus power. And then when a black man says she's Ling Ling, they say he's racist. Whoa, whoa, whoa. but your definition just changed from a week out. I don't understand. If this is a black man and you, you believe that Asians have more institutional power than they do, he certainly can't be racist towards her, but it gets even worse. The New York Times said that Sarah Jong wasn't being racist because she was trolling back at people. People were racist to her, so she responded with their own language to counter troll. Okay, well, in response to her being racist, this black comedian made comments at her. I think that was his point. And they're still calling it racist. So by two measures, they have contradicted themselves in one week. Look, if you're going to insult, antagonize, attack anybody for what their race is, I don't care. You're racist. And then, look, the, the, the comedian on Fox News who made, ra the made racist comments, I think those comments were racist. Do I care? Not necessarily. He's a comedian. I understand what he's trying to do. And I'm Korean when he called her Ling Ling and made reference, because she's Korean too. I laughed and I get it. I don't think the guy hates me for being Korean. I don't think he hates her for being Korean. I think he was trying to make a point about how she's racist and I understand it. Yeah. As George Carlin says, context matters. And uh, it doesn't really matter for a lot of people since they're obviously just waiting for the next outrage mob to galvanize the different crowds against each other for political brownie points, which uh, it just keeps happening more and more and be, it's becoming more outrageous. And there's a lot of levels of hypocrisy, whether it's Roseanne Barr compared to this New York Times editorial hire, whether it's people like Tara Strong that you brought up that also is rallying against racism, but also has racist content uh, that she has produced as well. So there's so much hypocrisy in all of this. And it's, it seems like people are just shooting themselves in the foot and really uh, not going anywhere. I don't, you know, so I, I've been a, I've actually been a big fan of Tara Strong. She, she follows me on Twitter. I met her a while ago at an award ceremony, and I think she's one of the best voice actresses of, of this generation, probably of all time. But she's been on Twitter very, very anti-Trump and anti-racist and all that stuff. And more power to you. I, I said to her, I really respect hearing your opinion and your thoughts on all this stuff, and I, and I still do. But there's an issue when you're going to complain about racism, and she was a voice actress for several characters on a show called Drawn Together where they, they mocked Asians using every racial stereotype in the book. So, look, defend the right to be offensive and make racist jokes, by all means. Just be consistent. You know, if, if you're going to come out and say, you know, these people are racist, the people at Patriot Prayer are racist, and I don't support racism, and then you're going to have the left saying things like, James Gunn shouldn't be fired for these offensive jokes, okay, no problem. Just don't, 
like don't complain about people making racist jokes and then backpedal as soon as it's your side that's being called out for racist jokes, especially when, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to say that Tara Strong necessarily disagrees with ra- offensive comedy, but the things she said as, a, as her character about, she called Mexicans useless. She, she made reference to black people not being people. Like, they, they draw, that, draw that distinction in the show. Her character's overtly racist. And she actually has an episode where she puts on a Chinese hat with computer buttons all over it, and then it, arms come down and pulls her eyes squinty. And then she, she calls a cat beef and broccoli. She says Chinese people now all of a sudden look different. Like, it's really offensive, and it's super racist. So if you're going to produce kind of like that, you better stand up for the rights of others to be offensive and to say the same thing. Exactly, and they never do because it's, a, it's like gang politics. It's all tribal warfare, yep. and we're seeing a lot of level of hypocrisies. Now, I think it's fair to say that a lot of this was initiated by the left, but now there's a big discussion because the right is kind of using very similar techniques and tactics of the right, and some people are saying, well, no, the right should never stoop to their level and continue this cycle because they're only making it worse, and some people are saying, yes, use their own weapons against them as effectively as you can since they're using it against us. I, I disagree to a certain extent. There was a study that came out, and it was Slate that reported on this. Like, of, of all places, Slate, far left, that said Trump's main base, those who got him elected, are not on the internet. They watch Fox News. So when I think about who the left and the right are, who voted for Trump and who hates Trump, it's not Twitter. The conservatives we think about on Twitter, I actually think are more like center-right and moderate. And it's not an issue of the left versus the right. It's an issue of the regressive, like, far-left communist socialists who are willing to bend the rules and lie about whatever in order to get what they want versus moderates on the left and the right. You know, there are a lot of people who follow me who aren't Trump supporters who think they are on the right. And then I told them to do a political compass test, and then it turns out they're center-left or center, and and they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that, you know. So what, what it really comes down to, in my opinion, is communists want to break down all these social structures and rebuild it. They want, they want everyone to be equal. Well, the only way that's possible is if you remove physical differences between people. Because, look, if someone's taller and someone's shorter, there's advantages and disadvantages right there. They have to do something about that. So what do they do? They will use, they will lie, cheat, and steal. They will say, you're racist, you can't do that. And then everyone will, so let, let's say they wanted to gain some power, get someone fired. They'll say, that person's racist, fire them. They will. Then when someone calls out them, them for being racist, they'll say, oh, no, I can't be racist because of institutional racism because the only goal is to make sure they maintain power within institutions so they can continue to amass power and they have no principles. Yeah. No principles, no morals. It's all about just gaining more power and authority for themselves, which is sadly uh, dominating our culture and people are playing into it. And uh, to me, this is a cycle that's not worth repeating and it's only going to get more out of hand and people are getting caught up and it's like me and you. Uh, we took the political compass taste, test. We're pretty much bottom center. You're a little center bit to, uh, you're a little bit to the left. I'm a little bit to the right, almost <laughs> on the exact same point down the, yeah. down the middle of the whole bottom part. But yet again, uh, yesterday I was called uh, scum and alt-right uh, here by random people. Oh. You're being called a racist all the time. So I'm walking through the park. Yeah. The police said... To the people on the west side, that's Antifa, you must leave the park to the west. Weapons have been spotted. They didn't. They walked north. So I'm streaming. I said the police just gave a warning telling the protesters to go to the west. They went to the north and disobeyed the police order. And then all of a sudden some guy yells, F you, you fascist. And I was like, what? Why are you calling me a fascist? And he says, they didn't defy the police order. I'm like, they literally did. The police just said it. And he was like, yeah, well, they don't have to. They can do whatever they want. I'm like, that's not what I said. I didn't say they couldn't. I'm just telling people what the cops just said. And he's like, F you, fascist. Yeah. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's like, I, I don't like authority. I don't like anyone over anybody else. I'm like at major anarchist uh, conferences. I like some of the philosophies. If, the, if there's any that I kind of entertain and espouse, it's definitely anarchism. Uh, but like free anarchism where there's uh, no harm done, where people have the right to decide how they want to live in their smaller decentralized uh communities, whether it's communism, socialism, capitalism, whatever you guys want. But decentralization of power is pretty much my main philosophical uh, principle. But yet still, they're trying to let me in with, you're all right. Or even some of the people on the right, rarely, but it does happen. Oh, you're, you're damn uh, never Trumper lefty. Yeah. We're, we're, we're none of that. Um, I, I know my principles. Tim espouses his principles on his uh, YouTube channel that you can check out. Uh, and uh, any last words on this crazy identity politics, race politics that's dominating the headlines now? You know, if I was a conspiracy theorist, I would say it's all on purpose because getting people like Anne Hathaway, who's a probably multimillionaire white woman, to tell, you know, white people can never experience this kind of threats and violence. And then this ends up with people fighting each other in the streets. To me, that's like 
the wealthy elites telling the peasants to beat each other while they, you know, live in their fancy mansion sipping their wine. And I, 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 it's kind of it's worrisome to me, in a sense, during Occupy, how close it was to the left and the right coming together over these issues of toppling the big power structures. Inequality. Yep. And now it's shifted to the two poor people, the poor white man and the poor black man, yelling at each other. Yep. You're definitely right. Thank you so much for your commentary, Tim. And thank you, beautiful and amazing human beings who are enabling this co- uh, this content with, of course, your support, with your viewership, with voting, not only with your dollar, but with your clicks. Without you, my job, Tim's job, wouldn't be possible. And that's why I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more. So once again, I want to thank Luke from wearechange.org. Go, go subscribe to him, guys. And what they were just talking about, the divide and conquer, the conspiracy Tim was talking about is actually the Hegelian dialect that is problem reaction solution in this case the agenda is the centralization of power the problem or thesis is the manufactured terrorist threat in this case it's the the far left the antithesis is the repressive police state and this is being backed by the, the far right the synthesis the end result is the removal of freedoms and the transfer of power from the many to the few the Hegelian dialect is the synthetic solution to the conflicts that can't be introduced unless those being manipulated take a side that will advance the predetermined agenda. That is what George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel said. Here's actually one that's that's really current on our news. Shut down alternative media. How they're doing that is is claiming fake news to, as a public outcry. You know, this is why the president's coming out and saying, you are fake news, and now... The public has got this huge outcry against fake news. And what's the solution? That It's the Big Brother censorship. And the end result is the removal of free speech. Uh, not just on the web, but overall, in general. This is just one way they are dividing and conquering us. And uh, Order Lab Chow is actually written on the money. And that means order out of chaos. You know, that martial law... We all know about the FEMA camps, you know, the, the FEMA coffins. And if you don't, um, I suggest you do some research. Even uh, Governor Jesse Ventura did a, a thing on his TV show called Conspiracy Theory where he exposed this. And he was he's very convincing. So, yeah, um, if you haven't, do some research on this. And... The only people who are going to end up here in the re-education camps are those who are dissidents, who don't go with the system. And this is how the left sees the whole right as fascists, as they're going with this big system. Although it's they're, they're misled, because most people on the right are opposed to the system. This is where the people on the right are severely misled, because Trump is not for you. He's not for the small guy. Trump is an elitist. He he's no different than Bush, Obama, or or any of the other presidents except save JFK. He he might have been the last the last president to oppose the money powers. Don't fall for their Hegelian dialect. Don't be divided. And I'm just gonna leave you with this one verse. Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree in what you say, that there be no divisions among you. You be united in the same understanding and the same conviction. As always, guys, have a wonderful day and God bless. Anonymous signing off. Don't forget to mash the like button and subscribe to Anon Medic.